Hi, students. So I am going to be looking at lesson 11 and working through the levels in this lesson, which is in unit three in code.org uh, for computer science discoveries. And our question of the day is we're trying to figure out how we can animate our images in game lab using something called the draw loop. So this is a really important, you can see it actually says it's one of the core programming paradigms in game lab. So this is something that really makes things come to life. Um, we will be learning a couple of new codes. I should have gone over that really quickly. So be looking for the function. This is the draw loop function and the frame rate, learning how to change the frame rate. Um, so we'll be looking at that. I know you guys that play games know all about frame rate. If you say something is glitching, it has to do with um, the frames not moving smoothly, making things glitchy. So what does the draw function do? I'm not going to play this video on um, this recording because it would be terrible. Uh, I would really encourage you to pause this video and go to Bubble 2 if you have not seen it and go watch it now. Um, so hopefully you watch this video and you will see um, it answers the question of what does the draw function do and how it works. Um, when the draw loop runs, this is something to keep in mind, it doesn't clear out anything previous, like a previous drawing. So it's going to continue to show it those things that it hasn't been covered up. Um, if you do not add a background at the beginning of the draw loop, you will still see all of the image images drawn to the screen previously. So we're going to see that in the next couple of levels. And this is a lot, you know, working with a draw loop is a lot like working with a flip book. And I think we've all played around with um, post-it note stickies and draw a lot of images that change just a little bit on each page and flip through it. Or you've seen someone do that before. That's really how the draw loop works. It is a lot of still images that move so quickly that you you don't really realize it, it just looks like it's moving. So this is a draw loop that is drawing ellipses. Um, this is not really so much like the flip book. This is more like um, a bunch of things that are just being drawn, but it is changing by one thing each time. So it's not really showing like one object moving, but the appearance of a lot of new objects. Eventually that would cover the entire screen. And we're going to move on. And bubble four is the first um, time we're going to be adding some code in here and do some work with the draw loop. The code inside the draw loop is run by Game Lab over and over again. So we're going to add orange circles so that they are drawn to. And I wanted to point out, I saw a student that made this little happy mistake. Um, and it took me a minute to figure out what was wrong. So they took and they created another draw loop. just like this. And they drug the ellipse out there. And we're using the random number block. Remember, by putting this random number here, that is the X value. Our maximum X value on our grid is 400. So if you want it to appear anywhere on the screen, you would say 400. That is our X value, which is left to right. And our Y value controls the up and down location. So again, I'll put zero to 400. And when we run that, we don't see orange um, dots on the screen, or orange circles on the screen. So it took me a minute to figure out why, because it looks like everything is done correctly. And then I remembered, um, this is reading from top to bottom. 
So even though it comes across this function first, it's not knowing to keep those orange dots there. It's actually moving straight to this function, which is basically replacing the one um, on front, you know, that was done first. The last thing replaces the one on top. So that being said, is we're going to put everything in the draw loop, including the orange and the green um, ellipses together, and I'm going to get rid of the extra. And now it works just fine. So we want one draw loop, not multiple draw loops. And the draw loop would have both fills. So if you if you also ran into that problem, hopefully this helped you understand why that problem didn't work, you know, why you were having that problem. And I always love it when people do make mistakes that we can learn from. So going along, level five. And it asks us, it says there's, this program has a small difference that makes it run differently. And this time we see that Instead of the green circles appearing all over, this yellow circle is still appearing randomly, but all the other circles that have appeared disappear. Um, all of the code outside of the draw loop is run first one time and all of the code inside the draw loop is run over and over forever. And so this program, we already clicked it, um, I shouldn't have done that. But anyway, what will it do? Inside the draw loop, you notice that the background is inside the draw loop. We can't change it because it's view only. But by putting it inside the draw loop, it's doing the background red, then it's drawing an ellipse. Remember, and then in the draw loop, it starts over again. So then it draws another red background and another ellipse another red background, another ellipse. What it looks like to our eyes is that we're just seeing the ellipse change locations all over the screen. Because the background is being drawn, created on that screen over and over, hiding the other ellipses that would be behind it. This is the, the frame rate up here is how quickly things are changing. We can't if I increase it, now that circle moves even faster. If I decrease it, it was set to five before. So now it's one frame per second. So we'll learn more about that line of code in a bit. Number six. Sprites in the draw loop. By changing the sprite properties, you can animate your characters. Let's see how it works. We see the alien is, looks like he's sort of shaking around. And we see that the variable sprite has been created outside of the draw loop. Then we see our draw loop function here. And inside that we have our orange background we have the rotation property that is randomly going between negative 10 and 10. And if you remember in lesson eight, I think it was when we learned about the rotation property, those are degrees. So this is literally changing between negative 10 and positive 10. So it's not a lot of degrees. We increase those numbers. We would appear to be shaking even more larger movements, I guess you would say. All righty. The important thing to note here is what is inside of the draw loop, what is outside of the draw loop. Inside of the draw loop, we have a background so that it erases these sprites as it's, you know, each time. We have the rotation and then we have the draw sprite command inside the draw loop. But outside of the draw loop is where the sprite is actually created. 
let's keep that in mind. And you can see over here we have our pencil shaking back and forth. And but our paintbrush is not moving. And the example, we want our paintbrush to move as well to shake like the first one. So let's look at what they've done so far. We've got our pencil and our brush that are both created in lines one through five. And then in line seven, we have our draw loop. Pencil, instead of it being set to a specific X coordinate, it is set to an X coordinate that is between 100 and 110, and it randomizes with each um, loop, with each uh, run of the draw loop. But the brush is only set to 300 every single time. So we want to go in here and change that. So it was set to 300. How about if we set it to a little bit less than 300? Or we can do it from 300 to 310. That gives it enough um, 10 pixels to kind of move around between. Let's try it. That worked. Notice that that was the only thing we had to change was that we had to randomize the X position. It is not moving up and down, only side to side. All right. So that was bubble seven. Um, I'm going to stop the video there and then I will make a second video with bubbles eight, nine, and, or eight and 10.